Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Keymaker Enhanced Edition with me, Bring It Dawn. Uh, let's go talk to Jubilast Narthropple. Oh, wrong person. I guess it doesn't really matter, but... Alright. The gnome that stands before you wears dirty and ragged clothes. They used to look stylish and wealthy long ago, but those times are long gone. His black hair is matted, a deep fresh scratch across his cheek. Despite of this rather pathetic look, the gnome behaves with inner dignity and even manages to maintain a superior manner. Tubulus Nartropel, at your grace's service. Your help with these kobolds and my almost drowned cart was timely indeed. He introduces himself and looks closely at your party. By the way, it's a shame no one organized a greeting party when such a famous and popular person as myself arrived to your capital. I wasn't expecting a red carpet covered with rose petals, but you could at least have sent ahead some delegation. Oh, at least some of my servants are still alive. Do you know how much it costs to train a proper servant? Jubilas jabbers too fast, never stopping even to take a breath. You can see he's piled up some emotions, it just needs to get them out of his system. Also, while I'm on that, I'd like to make an official announcement. The roads in your barony are in terrible condition. People must search for wading fords to cross the rivers because no one had bothered themselves with building bridges, and honest travelers have to take the risk of being attacked by kobolds at any moment. So, how did you say your barony was called? Ah, whatever, never mind. When I draw the map of these lands, I will call them Maybe Local Baron Will Help. I guess it's a fitting name. The gnome falls silent at last. Fell silent? Fall silent. He just watches you with his shifty eyes, opening and closing his mouth, as if he wants to say something more, but hasn't come up with anything yet. How do you know I am a baron? I've already told you I visited your capital some time ago. Weren't you listening to me? And I'm used to being greeted by officials when I arrive to settlements of at least some importance. The glory of myself and my exploits usually precedes me. And officials usually prefer to be on good terms with me. Uh, Jubilas smiles slightly. Uh, I didn't know you'd come. Yes, you're right. I should have remembered that your lands are in the middle of nowhere. And you don't get updates on important things in time. Yeah, Jubilas thinks it's over, tilting his head. Looks like this thought never occurred to him. Uh, let's see. So what happened here? How did your car end up in the river? My party and I set up camp at the bank of this river. We'd just finished kindling the fire when that purple bastard appeared. You know what he told me? He introduced himself as the king of the kobolds and told me he needed our clothes because he wanted to dress his subjects properly, you see, as long as they've established the kingdom of their own. That's literally what he said. I wonder where did he learn the words? Obviously, I told him to buzz off. Some kobold wants to strut around wearing the clothes of the great cartographer Jubilos Nartropel. Uh, no way. So I've been explaining my position to him, being rather eloquent too, suggesting he and his so-called kingdom might as well fall into the deepest sinkhole. And in the meantime, I've noticed that kobolds have already started to untie my cart. Well, I called my men to keep the cart safe. They couldn't guess what to do on their own, just stood there with their mouths ajar. Then things heated up as the fighting started, and while we were fighting, the ponies dragged the cart to the river. Ah, stupid animal. Alright, so normally I probably wouldn't say this, uh, but I like the voice acting, so let's keep going. I don't like your manner of speaking, gnome. So what? Well, I don't like a lot of things. You know what I do when I don't like something. I try to change it. For example, I don't like your barony's roads, so I've reported to the authorities about it. Namely, you. And as for you, instead of pouting, you better get down to business and try to resolve the trouble. I can see it's your first encounter with the freedom of speech. Just do what you consider right and let others discuss it. You know, not everyone gets a chance to become a baron, so discussing a baron's actions is actually all the unlucky ones can do. I do like that line though. Anyway, still, I'd like you to hold back your harsh comments. Actually, you know what? I don't mind the freedom of speech. I already got my monk level. I don't need to be law lawful anymore. I can say what I feel. Wow, a Baron supporting freedom of speech. Well, that's news. Remains to be seen what you'll say after reading my article. You said you were famous, but I don't know you. What are you famous for? That was either a stupid and offensive joke or a case of total ignorance. The latter, I hope. I'm famous as a traveler, a cartographer, an alchemist, and a journalist. The students of all the major universities study the world using my maps. My articles for different journals are well known everywhere from Andorran to Brevoy. You've definitely read some issues of National Alchemy, haven't you? <laughs> no. Culinary Almanac of the Inner Sea? 
or the most scandalous one, the independence describing benefits and drawbacks of governments and regimes in different states. Didn't read any of these. Oh, well, don't answer that. I don't want to spoil my impression of your barony. It's spoiled enough already. It would be hard for me to write at least something positive otherwise. Wait, the Jubilas Narthropel? Author of the 14 and a half eulogies to Pitax? Oh my, every student in the Academy of Grand Arts devoured your books, especially after King Aravetti banned them, tried you in absentia, and sentenced you to death. <laughs> All right, so I didn't have her with me last time, so that's that's cool. Hmm, hmm, I see at least someone in this shabby barony has at least a rudimentary education, even if they got them in such a dubious establishment as the Pitax Academy of Grand Arts. <laughs> I was expelled for irreverence. Ah, is this so? Well, if it is true, then you just might not be beyond hope. Yeah, so what is such a, so what is such a famous person doing that far from civilization? I pursue two objectives. The first is to write an article on this new barony of yours for the independence. The second is to draw a detailed map of the stolen lands. Before this barony appeared, it had been too dangerous to come here, but now an opportunity has appeared. Thanks to you, I must add. So, as you can see, the freedom of speech sometimes grants positive comments too. Anyway, I'm almost done with this journey. My article is practically ready, so is the map. All that's left to do now is to find an old dwarven outpost established here several centuries ago. And what is this dwarven outpost you're searching for? Your ignorance is stunning. You create a barony and still you know nothing about the lands you own. I'll have to enlighten you on the subject. You see, long ago there was a dwarven trade route crossing these lands. It connected Five Kings Mountains and the North. The route was so important to the dwarves that they were generous enough to set a number of outposts along it, manned with armed guardians to provide protection for the traders. One of these outposts must be somewhere nearby, lost and completely forsaken, but nothing can avoid the watchful eye of the great cartographer Jubilos Nartropel. I will find this outpost, and I will mark its location on the map. You can trust me on that. Tell me, is this old dwarven outpost abandoned? Is it possible that it's now used by trolls as a lair, for instance? Why not? Dwarves like being underground, trolls like being underground too. It's quite possible after dwarves left, their warm and cozy place fell into the hands of less attractive creatures. Well, I'm looking for the trolls lair. Maybe we're looking for the same place. Let's join our efforts and start looking together. Well, you proved to be a capable companion in a case of emergency. I guess I can entrust you with covering my back. Let's go. I will send someone for my cart later. Okay, so I'm thinking about swapping him out for Jathal. I think we'll wait. Let's swap him in for Reg. My skills are getting rusty. Now, what all does he have? I don't know what spells he has. So I just look here. Light shield, cure light wounds, cat's grace, bark skin. Sure. Let's grab some more. There we go. Alright. So I didn't use Jubilos last time either. Oh, that's right. Reg was our, uh, our strength. Alright, let's just explore in the area. Uh, then I'll probably go back. I need to balance my party a little better. Because right now... I mean, she has moderate strength, but we don't really have anyone that has strength as their primary attribute. And that's not good. I do what I must. So yeah, we'll have to go back to the capital. I need to grab Reg just for the strength. Can you make an epic pose? I need inspiration. There we go. Galt Ragout. Maybe that... 
Maybe that was Valerie's favorite food. I think that's somebody's favorite food in our, uh... Out of all the companions. Oh, so black and brand. Okay. Forgot about that piece. That's another, uh... Piece of a set of relics. Or artifacts. Uh, let's uh, actually heal him. I'm up positive real quick. I found something. You require my assistance. To our expendant. Honestly, I've been thinking about dropping Jathal out of the party. At least until we get legendary proportions. I'm there. Uh, regardless, for the Troll Trouble quest, once we get to the main dungeon for it, I'll be bringing uh, Jubilost and Harem along. So I'll probably swap out for that portion. Jathal for Harem and Tristian for... Uh... A clever boy. Oh. Hey, wait for me. A fair few here. Oh wait, why is that not out? Taste my fury. Uh, let's see. Oh, this can't be over. This will hurt. Alchemist bomb, fire damage. I'm not familiar with the alchemist's uh so acid is acid, obviously, and then this is fire. A splash damage is always equal to the minimum damage. Does he have the thing where he doesn't hurt allies yet? Again, I'm not super familiar with Alchemist, so I gotta... Is it Precise Bomb? There we go. Yeah, Precise Bomb. Okay. Oh, nice critical hit, bud. If only that hit for more. That's fine. Good job, everybody. Rigor Protection plus one. I think that's the whole map, because I don't think you can get down in these areas. Alright, let's get out of here then. Head back towards the capital, swap out. Let's see, I don't know what I'm going to do next. Because I want to do the, uh, the DLC. Follow if you dare. But I wanted to do that with the Miri. <laughs> And she's currently not with us, so. Let me double check cleric spells. I think it's a level 5 spell. Don't quote me on that, though. To revive. Do we have a time limit for anything we're currently on? Uh, let's go back to the capital. Uh, we can talk to Jubilost, I guess. It wasn't my plan, uh, but that allowed me to develop a party to potentially go to uh, focus on the main quest. It's always a good idea to focus on the main quest, and I know where I need to go, what I need to do. So that might be what I do next, and then save the DLC for once we have that lull after the main quest. Because I think after Troll Trouble, you have a few months to kind of, you know, take care of stuff. That might be worth doing. Let's go talk to the uh, storyteller first. We might be able to level up here. 
because you get a ton of experience for... Let's sell stuff first. Hi, Canera. Eight coins? Eight? What can we the eye, Honorable Hassif? Like black clouds hide the shining sun, that price steals the joy from my soul and the smile from my face. I'd pluck the moon from the sky for your smile, O oh beautiful daughter of the desert. But as long as I stand on this side of the counter, no one's charm is going to cloud my judgment. Eight gold coins, and not one coin less. You are so cruel. Canera notices you and smiles warmly. Now I'll leave you alone to your heartlessness. Oh, Hassif, shrewdest of merchants. I like it, though. I like people who know which side of their bread is buttered. Canera was purrs with pleasure, looking around playfully. What were you haggling about? Some trinket. I don't remember what it looks like. I just like haggling with Hassif. It's like a little game, and a little like flirting. I think you can find at least one more deserving subject of your flirtations around here. Canera looks at you with coyly from under her lashes. Who might that be? I'm quite at a loss. Surely you can't mean yourself. That wouldn't be modest at all. <laughs> you misunderstand me, let's end this conversation. Uh, I definitely do not count modesty among my flaws. You feel no shame at all. Why, how wonderful. But we, must, we mustn't freeze in the wind here. The northern weather could throw a storm our way any moment. There's a fireplace at my home, and we can make it burn even hotter. Okay, I'll gladly accept the invitation. Let's go. I want to ask you a favor. Canera stops and looks into the fire, its shadows and flames dancing on her face. She suddenly seems more serious than she was a moment ago in the square. I can't believe I'm going to ruin such a wonderful moment with a serious conversation. But still, I think you're interested in me the way I'm interested in you. And if that's true, please keep everything that happens between us a secret from everyone. Even your companions. That's a weird request, but why? I like you, and I don't want to keep it a secret. For one thing, I don't want to draw too much attention, at least for now. Having too many eyes on me, it's a little uncomfortable. Plus, I'm still bound by the conditions of the Herald of Nethys, and must try to keep my double identity a secret. If everyone begins whispering that Kaisi has grown close to the Baron, They'll expect her to behave in a certain way. And I know my sister. She won't be able to play along, and the secret won't stay hidden for long. Alright, fine. A secret it, it is, then. That's perfect. Canera's smile seems sincere and grateful. The land where I come from is full of opposites. Sometimes it's so hot during the day that the rocks melt under the sun like snow. But then comes night and the cold freezes you to the bone. Night is the time when families gather at the fireplace, when parents hold their children, and when lovers share the heat of their bodies and fill their hearts with each other's heat as they drift into sleep. I want to show you how it's done. She extinguishes the fire quickly and takes the final step towards you, wrapping her arms around your neck and kissing you passionately. You know what I feel when I kiss you? I taste mystery. I taste strength and passion and sweetness. Okay. Well, that's cool. I'm leaving now. I do what I must. Oh, do I need to talk to her? I probably need to talk to her. Let's talk to her. We should be seen together. You remember that, right? Sure. I'm off. Alright, to the merchant who I was initially trying to talk to, so I need to go talk to the storyteller. Turn in some stuff, get a bunch of experience. Alright, someone brought up all the books that I have in my inventory. Uh, let's get rid of these. Oh, all of those. Alright, there we go. Made some decent money off of that. Give it a sigh. I'll hold on to all these for now. Still don't have enough for a... Uh... Upgrade. I'm going to go ahead and rest here as well. 
and treat it as a shortcut back into the uh, the throne room. I should stock up on some uh, inflict wounds potions for uh, Jathaw. Just those are her healing potions. In due time. Okay, I brought some relics. Are any worthy of a story? Alright, he raises his eyebrow. We already talked about the ancient Rosslandic coins. Torag's pendant is new. The storyteller touches the pendant with Torag's mark. Oh, the symbol of Torag. The children of stone wear such pendants as protective talismans. I'll gladly purchase any that you have. Alright, this is for the uh, Rostovic relics we found. Ah, the belongings of brave heroes who perform their feats here before you. I sense you would be interested to hear their story. These lands took many lives and spawned many legends. I can now tell you of a distant expedition undertaken by a group of Brevik heroes to a place known as the, the Drowned Trees. And I hear something truly impressive. These items once belonged to a Dwarven smith, and they wish to tell us their story. The storyteller shakes his head sadly. But too much has been lost. Too much forgotten. The story of this smith eludes me. Please find the rest of the five missing items and return them to me as soon as you can. I'd be happy to trade the whole set of items for their story. Can you hear it calling to us? Let us hurry. And tell me about the drowned trees, which is, I think, my favorite story out of all of the, uh, the artifacts. 4,000 coins. So we have enough for a uh, scroll of revive. I hear rollocks creaking, river water splashing, bushes rustling and arrows singing through the air. I feel an invincible will, a cold resolution to finish what's been started, no matter the cost. My chain armor clings to my body, and my young hands grip a sword tightly. I am the leader of a group of brave souls set off to the stolen lands to clear them from bandits, once and for all. We sail on a large freight boat. It serves as bait for the bandits who keep throwing themselves at it, only to find death. A death as inglorious as the life they've lived. From time to time we manage to capture a prisoner. While the Inquisitor talks to them, I go to the stern, shutting my ears to their cries. I remind myself that these are scum, drenched in blood to the elbow. I think upon our cause, freedom from my homeland, and an independent Rosslyn. But still, my goosebumps, goosebumps rise with each pitiful cry. I must steel myself and be strong. Now who's in your group? A paladin, a ranger, a sorceress, a priest, Inquisitor, and me, a fighter. All experienced combatants. Over and over, we saved each other's lives in times of need. And why do you question the prisoners? The bandits attacking our boat are small fry. We're looking for their main lair, a place known as the Drowned Trees. We seek the leader of the bandits, an underwater monster named Dargat Droon, and we will not leave without his head. Have there always been so many bandits in the Stolen Lands? This land swarms with them, and we meet them more often than common merchants. You see, we started a rumor that the Aldori Sword Lords are using this boat to sneak treasures out of the country. Now half the gangs in the area are hunting us. Alright, please continue. And now it seems the whole army is attacking our boat. Far too many for us to fend off, but luckily we don't have to. While they battle monsters we've summoned in pitch black magical darkness, we drink the potions we prepared and dive under the water. The scum break into the hold, but instead of treasure, they find their final surprise. The work of a Rostovic alchemist, a trap. A dozen barrels of highly explosive oils. We watch from a safe distance as the boat is blown to pieces in a deafening explosion. Everything has gone according to plan. The more who die here, the fewer we'll meet in the drowned trees. We march through the forest, then camp to regain our strength. Their nest is close. Our Inquisitor discovered everything, even the location of their secret entrance. Today we rest. Tomorrow, the Bandit King will draw his final breath. Even if you sneak into the Bandit camp unseen, how do you handle all of them? Each of us is worth two dozen in battle. Besides, we are well prepared. Chaos, confusion, and summoned monsters will be on our side. And fire. A lot of fire. And what kind of secret entrance? An underwater path winding along the swamp bottom. We had potions to breathe freely underwater. We couldn't see beyond their, our outstretched arms in the muddy water, and there were plenty of traps along the way. But the Inquisitor learned all the signs that marked the safe passage. At least we believe she did. Please continue. We trudge through muddy waters. Suddenly, a giant log studded with blades falls from above. I manage to stagger back, but the paladin who walked alongside me is now a gory sight, spread thin across the ground. Remember, we found a crumpled uh, paladin's helmet. 
The next moment, a monstrous creature emerges from the darkness, a twisted cross between fish and monkey. Its clawed hand reaches out, effortlessly melting away the Inquisitor's flesh, then ripping out her heart. This is the king of the bandits, Dargit Jrun. The bandit we captured did not lie, but the secret passage he spoke of led right into the underwater lair of his master. I bury my terror deep in my soul. There is no time for weakness. There are only four of us left, and we are grasp gasping for air by the time the freak's lifeblood stains the water. We leave the beheaded body on dry land, then retreat and recover. Only now I allow my hands to tremble, my breath to race unbidden, my tears to flow. What kind of a monster was this Dargit Droon? They say he was once a normal human, but he offended a powerful fey. She cursed him, turning him into a monster, but one bestowed with the ability to breathe underwater and melt human flesh with his touch. With these powers, he became the Bandit King. So, I think he was he was one of the kingdoms. We'll get into it later in the story, but I think he... Uh, He's part of our story in a way. Uh, do you do you find anything useful in Dargut Slayer? Oh yes, the Bandit King was a true collector of magical items. We lost two of our friends, but what we found there would help us finish what we started. So the Bandit wanted to set you up, but he played right into your hands. You could say so. Dargut Drune didn't expect an armed party to appear there before him, but we were too unprepared for the encounter. The Bandit's lie cost both sides dearly. All right, please continue. The next night we return the same way. We swim up to the surface and quietly gather our bearings. Above us loom the drowned trees, enormous dead trunks emerging from the water, bridges crisscrossing the branches. The air is filled with the sounds of battle. Having lost their king, the bandits now battle each other for power. We're ready to join the fight. We leave at dawn. Behind us, smoke rises up to the sky. The bandit nest smolders and blazes. Only two of us remain, the priest and I. We've won, but this victory tastes of ash. Uh, cinders and swamp ooze. I ask him, tell me, Zvonki, was it worth it? So Zvonki is the uh, the Aristotle priest that we met at the uh, at the where we became a baron at the ceremony. He puts his hand on my shoulder and says, "Yes, Jamandi. Now the stolen lands will be ours." I wish I believed him. The storyteller heaves a sigh, runs his hand over his face, and rubs his temples. Thus the expedition to the drowned trees came to an end. I must admit, it was no easy feeling for me to stand in the place of this daring woman. The steel of her soul was colder than ice. Wait, is this the Jamandi Aldori? Is this the story of Jamandi Aldori? But she's still alive. Some people become legends in their own lifetime. Jamandi has performed many glorious feats, and there may, may yet be more ahead. If Jamandi has once cleared the stolen lands of bandits, why must we do it all over again? The death of Dargat Drun and the destruction of the drowned trees weakened the bandits, but not for long. The paladin who died was a noble, and he was supposed to claim the stolen lands and send in his troops. While Jamandi sought another candidate or a priest capable of performing a resurrection ritual, a new bandit leader emerged in the destroyed fortress on the banks of the Tuskwater. Within the year, the stolen lands were swarming with gangs once more. Well, thank you for the story, storyteller. Uh, your stories are amazing. You make it sound as though you're actually there in the moment. The storyteller nods. I gained this gift after I lost my eyes. When I touch relics, I can feel the thoughts and emotions of those who previously owned them. If the emotions are strong enough, I can even see the events that left those impressions. Can you tell me one of your stories again? Okay. I'm there. Um... No. I think next episode was talk we'll start by talking to uh Jubilost and then we'll head out. I'll decide off camera if I'm gonna do the DLC next. Or if I'm gonna do uh focus on troll trouble. Regard actually let's resurrect uh Amiri real quick while I'm thinking about it. So I'm sure I'll forget to do that off camera. Is it more expensive here than it is? 7200. Let me go talk to. I thought Jod stood outside somewhere. 
Guess he's just inside. I do what I must. Was the was the priest in uh Trade Guard. I think his Scrolls are cheaper. I serve you, your grace. Uh, how are you enjoying your duties as the high priest? Everything is all well, your grace. I just keep forgetting what a mess it is in the stolen lands, and how troubled are the minds of its people. Sometimes I must listen to such nonsense from my visitors. Erastin, forgive them. How much are yours, buddy? Yeah, his is cheaper. So uh, if you're gonna buy one, get it from uh, get it from him. All right, let's see here. All right, welcome back, Amiri. I'm there. All right, I guess in the next episode we can head out towards. So I want to talk to Jubilas first. I keep forgetting about that. I'm gonna go stand beside him and save, and that's gonna be where we uh where we pick up next time. Just so I don't forget. I think he has a lot to say as well. Again, another reason why uh, the second to last companion we get is my favorite companion. Because he doesn't have a lot to say. Crap, where's he at? Oh, there he is. Standing in this pile of rubbish. I guess it's a good as place, a good as place as any. Alright, I'm going to call the episode here, and the next one we will... Uh, Talk to Jubilast, and we'll head out either towards the DLC or towards the uh, Troll Trouble. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.